Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to install a second hard drive in the 2010 Mac Mini using an OWC data doubler. We recommend watching this video in its entirety before proceeding with the installation yourself. We've already shut down the Mini, gathered our materials, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to flip the Mac Mini over. Rotate the bottom cover counterclockwise until the two white dots line up. You can then lift off the bottom cover and set it aside. Next, we'll need to remove the memory. Push outward on the memory retainer clips until the top module pops up. Then, slide the module straight out. Repeat the process for the lower module. Use your Torx T6 screwdriver to loosen these three screws holding the fan in place. Once they're loose, lift the fan up and to the side so you can detach the connector. Use your nylon pry tool to gently lift up on the connector's cables in order to lift the connector itself out of its socket. You can then set the fan aside. Next, use your Torx T6 screwdriver to remove the screw holding the plastic cowling in place. Then do the same with the one holding the logic board in place. You can now gently slide the cowling out and set it aside. Next, remove the two Torx T8 screws holding the hard drive to the antenna grate. Then, remove these three 2mm hex screws. If you don't have a hex wrench, you can use your Torx T8 to remove the hex screws as well. If you do, use a light touch to avoid stripping the screws. Gently slide the antenna grate out and hold it off to the side. The airport cable is attached at this point and can be gently lifted free. You can then set the antenna grate aside. Next, we're going to detach these two SATA connectors, three sensor connectors, and the IR board connector. The SATA connectors simply lift up. The remaining connectors come out the same way the fan connector did earlier. Once those cables are disconnected, we can pull the logic board back. Slide the logic board removal tool into these two holes near the rear of the Mini, then slowly pull it back until the board moves out a bit. Remove the tool and pull the board back some more until you see the power cable. Simply pull the cable back gently to detach it from its socket. Finally, pull the logic board all the way out of the Mini and set it aside. Remove the hard drive by simply lifting it up slightly and pulling it out of its bay. To get the optical drive out, we'll first need to remove the power supply. First, remove the clip holding the power plug in place, and rotate the connector counterclockwise until it comes free. Next, remove the Torx T6 screw holding the power supply in place, as well as the one holding the bay in on the opposite side. You can now lift the power supply slightly, slide it straight out of the Mini, and set it aside. Finally, lift the optical drive assembly up and out of the Mini. We need to remove the optical drive from the carrier so we can install the data doubler. Start by gently peeling this sensor off the bottom of the drive.
Next, remove these two Torx T6 screws holding the drive in on this side. There are two more on the other side. The first is fairly easy to get at. For the second, you'll need to lift these cables out of the way first. You should now be able to separate the drive from the carrier. Finally, we need to remove the SATA cable by lifting the tape that holds it in place, then sliding the connector out of its socket. We can install any 2.5 inch platter based or solid state drive in the data doubler. For this installation, we're going to install an SSD. Line up the SATA connector on the drive with the socket on the data doubler. Then slide the two pieces together. Attach the drive to the data doubler through these two holes using the two thick Phillips screws that came with it. You may need to lift the drive slightly so the screw holes align. The data doubler is now ready to install into the Mini. Line up the SATA connection on the data doubler with the one on the optical drive cable and slide the two pieces together. Use the tape to hold the cable down on the data doubler. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. Set the drive carrier over the data doubler, making sure that the SATA cable hooks around the center bar and isn't trapped underneath. Next, replace the screws that hold the data doubler to the carrier. You may need to adjust the carrier a little so that the holes line up. Once the four screws have been replaced, all you need to do is place the sensor back in the same approximate place as it was on the optical drive. Again, there should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. We can now reassemble our Mac Mini. There are two holes on the front of the optical drive carrier that go over these two pins on the inside of the Mini. Slide the carrier into the Mini, lining up the pins and holes until the entire assembly lays flat inside. The power supply has a metal pin on the end that goes into this notch inside the Mini. Carefully slide the power supply into the Mini until it seats. It may take some wiggling, but be careful not to damage the IR board with the metal pin. You can now replace the two Torx T6 screws that hold the power supply and drive carrier in place. Rotate the power connector clockwise until it's flat in place. This may also require a little maneuvering. Once you have it in place, reinsert the pin to hold it there. There are two pins on the hard drive that line up with these two holes in the Mini. The easiest way to align them is to place the Mini on its front edge and maneuver the drive until they align and the drive slides into place. You can now slide the logic board back in most of the way. Use your nylon pry tool to position the power connector with its socket and push the board forward slightly until they connect. You can now push the board all the way back in, making sure not to trap any sensor cables underneath. You can now reattach the SATA and sensor cables by simply pushing them down into their appropriate connectors. The wires should be in roughly the same position, so it should be easy enough to tell which connector goes where.
Next, reattach the airport antenna by lining its connector up with its socket and snapping it into place. Run the wire under the rim of the Mini and set the Mini grate into place so that it sits flat. It may take a couple of tries to get it to sit right, so be patient. Replace the Torx T8 screws that hold the hard drive to the antenna grate. Then, reattach the three hex screws around the edge. If you're using your Torx T8 to do this, you'll need to be extremely careful not to tighten them too hard or you'll strip the screws. Next, slide the cowling back into place and reattach the Torx T6 screw that holds it in place. Then, replace the Torx T6 screw that holds the logic board in place. Now it's time to replace the fan. Holding the fan over the board, line up the connector with its socket on the logic board and snap the two together. You can now rotate the fan into place and tighten the three Torx T6 screws that hold it in. You may now replace the memory. The notch on the memory modules line up with the pins in the memory slots. Place the first module into the lower slot at about a 40 degree angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. Put the bottom cover onto the Mini, making sure that both the white dots line up. Then, rotate the bottom cover clockwise until the black and white dots are aligned. You may now flip your Mini over, hook it back up, and turn it on.